Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Brewing Business Show. This is a space dedicated to the craft beer industry and entrepreneurs who wants to learn more about mindset, health, wealth, business, and of course, beer. I'm your host, Pedro Meneses, and before we start, I just wanna make sure you buckle up, crack open a cold one, and get ready to hear some life-changing information. Cheers. So welcome back, everybody, to episode 19 of the Brewing Business Show. If you're a first timer, be sure to check out the previous episodes and do me a favor, and leave me a review on iTunes so you can help more people to find the show. And today, guys, I have the honor to introduce you to the owner of Not Your Hobby Marketing Solutions, a consulting company that offers online educational programs and coaching services designed specifically to teach business skills to craft beer beverage professionals. With over 20,000 hours of experience on the business side, from sales to regional management, a BA in marketing from Texas State University, and more than 15 years of experience working in the service industry, she is an authority in beer sales, marketing, team management, distributor partnership management, supply chain logistics, and customer service. And today, she's here to share with us her experience and give us an important lesson in business skills, marketing, and more. So welcome to the show, Julie. It is a pleasure to have you here. Hi, Pedro. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk to you today. I know. We were having a nice conversation before we went live, and I'm excited to see where this show is going to take us in the next hour, you know? So yeah. why don't we just jump right in? And before we get into talk about all the things that I wanted to talk, I want you to talk to us about today, you know, especially when it comes to developing business skills, especially in the, in, in the times that we're living right now, why don't you take us a little back in time and talk to us a little about your story, your background, so people can get to know you a little bit better. Okay. Well, yeah, I, um, I'll try to make it short. I'm, I'm from the South and I'm kind of long winded, so I'll try to <laughs> keep things succinct. Um, so I got my first service industry job when I was 15. Um, I grew up in Dallas, Texas and Richardson actually right outside of Dallas. And, um, it was at a barbecue restaurant and I couldn't even drive myself to work. My dad had to drive me there actually. Um, I, and I, I think I just got kind of hooked on it from there. That was like the turning point for me. I have dabbled in other industries, but I've really stuck with food and beverage and the hospitality and um, being on the service side, you know, um, which led into sales, you know, a career in sales and marketing for me. But um, yeah, it continued through there. I waited tables all the way through high school. Um, I actually funded my own marketing degree at Texas State. It took me a long time to graduate. Like most wow. of my friends had already been finished, but I came out with no student loans, which I'm like, I'll take it, you know, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, waiting tables and bartending all the way through college, uh, it paid for books and, you know, uh, room and board and living expenses and my tuition and all that good stuff. And, um, you know, San Marcos is beautiful. So I feel very lucky that I got to go to school there, but it gave me some great experience. Um, and it gave me an intro into sales and, um, you know, for all you service industry people out there, you, you are a salesman already. That's, Absolutely. that's what that is. I think people underestimate that all the time. I, I love it when service industry folks move into sales and marketing, cause I think they just get it, you know, they get that like people aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I, I graduated. I didn't want an office job. I, I said no to all my cubicle offers that I got, you know, after school. Um, and uh, I wanted a change. So I uprooted myself and moved to Chicago without a job, you know, without anything <laughs> going on. Um, I continued to bartend, which is super fun. I worked at a place right across the street from Wrigley Field. Um, you want to get thrown to the wolves and bartending, you bartend during a Cubs game that's like super <laughs> hardcore um I can't but yeah I, yeah it's crazy it's the craziest thing I've ever seen but um all the while I was working at these very like beer centric uh bars and restaurants right so I got turned on to uh imports and uh craft beer I remember the first pub I worked in when we got fat tire that was like woo, you know oh, everybody yeah. kind of went crazy um, I started drinking stuff like, of course, I'm one of those people, Sierra Nevada pale ale was like my gateway, you know, right. um, I was drinking a lot of Red Hook ESB. I'm a sucker for like <laughs> an extra special bitter. I still am like cask beer and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I got turned on to beer and I knew I loved business and I knew I loved the craft beer world. And eventually I found my way back to Dallas. Um, shout out to the ginger man. That was my that was the start 
<laughs> the catalyst <laughs> for my entire career in the beer industry. They do an incredible job of training everybody that works there, but I managed there and I, and I was like, Oh, what are these sales reps that are coming in to like call on me? It's like, wait a second. I had a light bulb moment. I was like, I can do beer sales. I got yeah. this. And so I just started, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I just started throwing out resumes for like, it took me a good like seven months to get a call back. And finally I did. And I got, I cut my teeth on the import side. I get a little bit of shit for that from the craft, <laughs> like domestic craft community. Yeah, um, really can suck it up. <laughs> I, well, what I usually tell them is, you know what? I was always the underdog. So like if anybody yeah. can teach you sales, trust me, it's me. Like when you can sell a six bottle, 750 milliliter case for $125. If you can do that, you don't need my help. But if you can't, then you probably need to come talk to me because exactly. I did that for a very long time. <laughs> um, yeah, so stuff like that. I mean, it was a challenge, but I, you know, I spent over 10 plus years on the import side of things in the US. Um, I, I started off with just field sales. Um, I started doing international marketing campaigns. I moved up to regional sales. At one point I was selling, uh, let's see, I think eight different breweries from Europe um, in a seven state region. And I was juggling about 13 different distributors. So I've had my fair share you know, right. of <laughs> experience on that side. And, you know, a handful of years ago, I started noticing that there was a problem. Our, our beer industry was maturing and growing and it was going crazy. Right. So right. I, you know, it's been like that for over a decade, but what I started noticing was that the business side was not developing as fast as the demand side. Right. So, um, I had colleagues and friends that would come to me and say like, how do I work with my distributor? How do I sell into this difficult account? How do I use Facebook to market my brewery? <laughs> you know, things like that. And, you know, I joked with my husband, I was like, somebody needs to teach this stuff. Cause like, there's no, right. there's no books. There's no classes. There's not really any like direct, uh, research. there's a ton of stuff about production, right? Yeah. Which I'm sure, you know, like the science side, production side, short up, that's great. People yeah, are covered. well served, <laughs> totally covered. Business side, it's like crickets. Like yeah. there's not there's there's stuff about like how to start a brewery, how to get started, you know, uh, different business models and stuff like that. But it's like, how do you actually sell this stuff? How do you right. market this? Like, how do you execute distribution? Like all these little things that, to be honest with you, I took for granted because I did them every day. Right. I didn't think that I had like a special skill until people started asking me and I was like, wait a second, I really enjoy this. Like giving people that light bulb moment of like, Oh, okay. I get it. Like I get it. And it brought me a lot of joy. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to turn this into a business. I'm, right. I'm tired of being on the corporate side. I want to work for myself. I have little kids, you know, I, right. I'm, I'm going to turn it into a business. And that's, that's my long winded answer of, you know, <laughs> My, no, that's my a great background. Answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you have an amazing background, you know, and that's what I was joking around when, when you were saying uh, or sharing with us your timing with the imports, you know, like when, when I said like they can, they can suck it up a little bit is because those things give you the experience for who you are right now, you know, and everything that you have created to help your clients and to keep, keep helping the crappy industry, you know, because uh, you're not the first one who has identified this problem. When I first got into the industry too, you know, it was like, there's a lot of stuff here, you know, that people is doing like production and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But what about the execution part? What about the marketing and sales? That is actually the part that is going to show the money, <laughs> you know? So yeah. I, I, I believe you have great experience in at least a perfect match, you know, for you to be mm -hmm. here in this industry, like you said, because I think this industry have this special thing that attracts the right people. You know, it's funny because I've been reviewing my, my memories from Facebook from a couple of years ago or last year. And I was talking about beer all the time without knowing that I will end up in this industry and doing this show and building my marketing company too for the craft beer and all that stuff. It is crazy, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, but <laughs> yeah. you know, for, there's, there's one reason why we're here. And there's even one reason why we're doing this right now, you know, and talking about all this. And that's the goal, you know, that you share your story so people now know where your experience come from and who, what makes who you are right now in your company. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, you know, it, it perfectly coincides with, 
you know, the identity of the beer mm -hmm. community. And that's where about stories. So I think a, a lot of people are apprehensive about talking to me sometimes about like working with me or like taking one of my classes or something like that. And I'm like, just get on the phone with me. Like, let's just talk shop. Like, let's, you right. know, and a lot of the times it, it really does help people start to loosen up a little bit, you know, because they, they get a feel for my story, where I came from, my experience. They're making sure that they aren't talking to some random person that claims to be an expert. So yeah, yeah, it's, Absolutely. it's, it's about connections, which is the essence of this entire industry. So yeah, yeah. no, I totally agree with you. Now, talking a little bit more about the business part, you know, because I think we're in a very interesting times right now. There's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff going on that there's different opinions. And I believe that, um, I, I know that some people know it's not, they're not going to like me saying this, but I think at, the, at some point this pandemic has been a blessing. Why? Because it has opened the eyes for a lot of people in the industry to understand that there is a business side that you need to start paying attention right now. If you want to have a brewery in the next six to 12 months. So, Talk to us a little bit about what are those business um, areas that people are not paying attention right now and they should start paying more attention so they can survive not only this crazy time, but also thrive in the next year, in the next five or 10 years too. Yeah, I think um, to be honest with you, the thing that I stress the most for people to have is don't ignore the marketing plan. Just, just don't. You're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Just, and, and I'm not talking about some canned, you know, template that you download off of Google or from somebody else that's right. not designed for the business industry, right? This is why, like, I have an entire digital course that has, like, literally over four hours of instruction on how to build a marketing plan designed for the craft beverage industry because we speak a different language, we do business differently, our structure is different, we have to worry about the three tier system, you know, and so on and so forth. So if you just grab a marketing plan online or ask, you know, no offense to the Facebook groups out there, but if you just ask somebody in a Facebook group, like you're not going to get all the details that you actually need, you know, you really have to invest a lot of time and effort um, into this. Um, Again, this is why I started my business, because if you search like beverage marketing plan, you're probably not going to find one, yeah. <laughs> at least not find one for free. You might have to like pay a lawyer or something, you know, to like, uh, to get like a template or um, market, traditional marketing agencies are super expensive. So if you're like a nano brewery or if you're a brewery in planning, you probably don't have access to that, like at the beginning. So it's a matter of, you know, um, most everybody in our space is like DIYing everything. Anyways, right. you know, at marketing is just another thing on their plate. Um, so how, the way I think about it is like, how can I get people the information that they need in like an actionable way that they can see the value in it, right? So I, I say marketing plan, that's very kind of broad in general. Yeah. But what I want people to think about is, first of all, you need a plan to begin with. You don't need to do this wing it. I'm just going to see what happens in sales. I call it spray and pray you know, where you're just like, <laughs> blanketing, like, it's just like, there's no direction, there's no goal, there's no focus, um, you know, and again, it's kind of the essence of the name of my company is that if you have customers, you have a business, this is not a home brewing hobby anymore. This yeah. is legit. Like you're going to have to have legit documents. Like when you go to get funding from a bank, they ask you for a business plan. There's a reason for that. They want you to be prepared um, and you need to be prepared for marketing. So Right. Some things to think about that are important is first of all, like set some goals, right? Set some marketing goals. Like what do you, what are you trying to do? Think about strategy. Are you trying to just build brand awareness? Are you trying to encourage customer trial? Um, are you redoing your marketing plan? Like, are you more mature? Like, do you need like a reset? You know, uh, do you need right. to rethink things for the pandemic? Just getting some basic marketing goals of like, differentiation or value propositions, um, you know, uh, comparisons with competitors, like what are we doing better? You know, things like that. Start with that, work your way into like, what's our pricing structure going to look like? How are we going to distribute this? And when I say distribute, like distribution, not just like, where are we actually selling product? Like, how are you delivering it? Is it a crowler? Is it a growler? Is it a mix pack? Is it a, 
you know what I mean? You have to think about yeah. the actual container, like delivery. Um, but then also, you know, have you thought about dominating your backyard? That's a cliche statement that everybody throws around right now, although it's true. <laughs> like, where are you selling beer geographically? Like, who are you selling beer to? And then that gets into things like finding your target consumer. You can't market to everybody. You're going to lose every time. It doesn't work that way. Like who can benefit the most from your products and specifically what you do well, and then figuring out who you're trying to sell beer to so that it's a match, you know, cause when it's a good match, it's like everybody wins. Um, and then thinking about things like your marketing channels, like what do you want to use? What can you handle? Like how tech savvy are you? Uh, do you understand social media? Can you do your own website? Um, email marketing. I think email marketing in the brewing space is completely <laughs> underrated, but uh, I'm a big email person just because I like right. connecting with people that way. But like, you know, how are you doing it? Are you monitoring your online reputation? You know, things like that. And then figuring out how to track your progress. Like if you want to make it better, you got to track it. That whole like, you know, what could be what is it? What can be measured can be managed. Yeah. That old school saying about, what, 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 you know, if you want to improve something, you got to like track it what, and, and measure it. Right. What get measured gets improved. That's yes, it. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you want to make sure that you have a system in play. And if you can start with just that kind of basic structure, you're going to be in really good shape. You're actually ahead of the game. Cause a lot of people don't uh, think about those things or they don't think that they're important, but when you're knee deep in social media posts and you're like, what the F am I doing? Why am I, ugh, I don't know what, you know, what's working and blah, blah, blah. You're going to wish that you did a marketing plan like way at the beginning. So it just, it saves you a lot of time and effort. It gives you some clarity on the direction you're headed in, you know? Yeah. It's good all around. <laughs> yeah. I think you, we, you can just drop the mic and just, you can close the show right here because <laughs> No. She just nailed it right now. <laughs> like, like, you know, it's great. Like, I think that was a great explanation, you know, about what has to be in place. And there's a couple of things that I want to, that I want to um, re recap a little bit, because first of all, like you were saying traditional marketing agencies, right. Or traditional marketing, like, first of all, marketing doesn't have to be that expensive anymore. And with digital marketing, with things that you do, you, there, there's, there's strategies that can be implemented according to anybody's budget. Right. Mm-hmm. The point is that you have to be able and open to realize that there's opportunities out there. There's options available for you to market your, 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 your brewery or your beer or yes. whatever it is. Right. Second, like you said, like marketing is a broad word, right? Like it's not about just putting the best label in your can. I mean, that's branding, but there's other stuff like your social media marketing, like how are you going to generate more customers? How are you going to attract more people? You know, like you said, not everybody wants, not everybody is your perfect customer. Yeah. Nobody wants to buy, not everybody wants to buy your beer, you know? So those are very, very specific uh, concepts that I believe are the main problem. Why people is very skeptical about marketing in this industry right now. And the other thing is because, uh, like somebody told me a couple of months ago is like, uh, this is a hospitality business. This is not to sell beer online, which a lot of people is surviving right now because they're selling <laughs> beer online. What's your opinion on that? <laughs> oh God. I, you know, I, um, uh, first of all, before I forget, I'm just going to go back to the point you made just a second ago. It's okay to ask for help. You don't have to be an expert in everything. The technology is your friend. Our, our industry is evolving and people like you and I have come along and there's a lot of other people out there, supplier partners, you know, that really can help you fill in the gaps. So if you're in the craft beverage world, please, you don't have to be an expert in all of this. You cannot, it is okay to ask for help, you know, and I tell people that all the time, but um, my take on it is that e-commerce is the future of our industry, regardless if there's a pandemic or not. So I totally I'm also a, I, I'm a data nerd. Like I, I, I'm on like Nielsen webinars all the time. And like, I, I'm also a big fan of borrowing stuff from other industries. Right. So I look at what the wine people are doing. I look at what the craft spirits people are doing, what the cider folks are doing, um, the seltzer people, the F and B's, the ready to drinks, the kombucha people. I, I look at the, the non-alcoholic, even the soda folks, like if it's a consumer packaged good, that industry as broad as that is, has been around for centuries. Like right. that's, you know, just because we're a subset of that doesn't mean we're not part of that data set. Right. So 
if you can look for trends and clues, you have to kind of be a detective to piece it together specifically for alcoholic beverages. But um, our three-tier system is very antiquated. A lot of the state laws are very antiquated. Blue Sundays, whatever they call them, you know, I, and they're the blue laws for Sundays. I know those are in Texas because I yeah. grew up with those. <laughs> um, it just doesn't apply to our society anymore. And um, yeah. again, not to say this pandemic is a good thing, but it might be a blessing in disguise. Yeah. If anything, for just these antiquated like alcohol beverage commission laws that shouldn't be around anymore, you know? And um, I think it was this week, Iowa was the first state. They have alcohol to go permanently from now wow. on. That's, That's a legit awesome. thing. Um, Michigan just approved it until 2025. Colorado, we have it till the end of 2020, but I'm pretty sure it's going to go forward. Actually, I think Texas is in late stages of saying, you know what, F it. Just, you just sell it. Yeah. <laughs> like just throw the rule book <laughs> out the window, just sell it. So what I like to tell people about this is your e-commerce and your online sales efforts right now are not wasted. Trust me. Those are, you can call me back in six months from now if I'm wrong and you can yell at me. I, I'll, I'll give you my cell phone number. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, and you know, if, now that you, if I'm wrong. <laughs> right. I don't think you're wrong, you know, because I've been saying the same thing a, a lot, you know, recently, like for the past couple of months, I've been like pounding on the e-commerce, the e-commerce, like guys, you need to put your systems in place. You need to work on this because here's another thing that I want you uh, to explain uh, our audience to, you know, because the problem also I see with a lot of uh, market, online marketing, the social media and all that stuff is that people expect immediate results, right? Mm -hmm. That might be the case. I'm not, it was not, but I, I, that might be the case with traditional methods of marketing. But when it comes to social media, you know, to the online marketing, uh, there's so many people in this, in this space, you know, there's, you're not the only business trying to advertise your brewery or you are competing not only with breweries, but any, a lot of more people, right? Mm -hmm. How important it is to understand that it takes time, you know, like, like this is having a marketing plan is a long-term goal. That's what I want you to talk about. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, specifically when it comes to social media, you, you've got, um, I go back to all these old sayings. It's probably because of where I grew up, but, um, you, you can either have fast or, you know, free. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to get both. Like you, nobody right. ever gets both. Right. So like free would be organic growth for social right. media. Right. Um, you can do it very low cost and you open your brand up to everybody. It is it, social media is one of the best ways for small business owners to yeah. get brand awareness going. It is just regardless of what you feel about what Zuckerberg is doing right now. Cause I'm I mean, I'll just be transparent. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I find myself in a conundrum as a small business owner. Like I, you know, it's like eating at Chick-fil-A, like it tastes great and it benefits me, but I may not agree with, you know, their values and stuff, which makes it very hard. Like it's right. conflicting because social media marketing is one of the best ways that you can grow your craft beverage brand. You can reach a ton of people um, very easily just by using some tactics, right? Like hashtags or uh, engagement strategies, you know, um, geo-targeting, like things like that. Um, and it's so effective and so amazing how many people you can reach, right? Um, yeah. That's the free way. That's organic. And it's going to take a lot of time to grow, but it will grow. You just have to stick around for it. Um, and even on the paid side, which is faster, you know, you can do paid social media advertising. I do it myself. Um, that's the faster way. You, you pay to reach more people quicker, right? That is just, you know, kind of a shortcut. Yeah. But even with that, you know, the training that I've received on like social media advertising and whatnot, even from these experts and gurus and business coaches out there, if you throw up a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad, you don't need to pull that sucker for at least 14 days. Like yeah. that's, you know, you're not going to see like instantaneous <laughs> results, even if you pay for it. So yeah. yes, I a hundred percent agree with you. It takes time. It takes time to build that up. You're not, you're not going to get instant gratification from it, but is, it is the, one of the most efficient and cost-effective ways to grow, grow your craft brand. 
Yeah, and the reason why I brought that up is because, you know, uh, for what you were saying at the beginning um, and how important it is to understand that you need to have a, a plan in place. You know, I, 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 um, I have my own coaches. I have my mentors too, you know, and, and we understand that whatever we try to do on social media, on the internet, like if you run ads or do things organically, there's going to have, there's going to be steps to follow in order to see those results, right? And like you were saying, you have to be specific with your goals. You have to know who you want to target. You want to, you want to know what kind of message you want to put out there. You want to know exactly what you want to do to attract more people and in which I, I resume that in, 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 in three steps, you know, like know your audience, your offer, and have a system in place, you know, to grab that people on social media when they get in touch with your posts, with your ads, with your pictures, with your stories, to get their attention and walk them through that journey into to convert them into buying customers, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that's, that's why you why, why are you to share that with us because it is important to understand that, you know, it's, it's important to know that, yeah, there's going to be a return on investment, but you have to trust the process, <laughs> you know? If you don't yes. trust your process, that's why... Julie is here and that's why I'm here. That's why <laughs> like another 10 people yeah. here that have been in the show that are here to help you figure that out, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then again, like it goes back to you. Um, everyone's going to say, Julie, we're in the three tier space. There's no way that I can track conversions. Yeah, there is. You're just going to have to put a little bit of effort behind it. Yeah. It just looks a little bit different because you're not, um, you know, it used to be, oh, we're not selling anything online. Like, how am I going to, you know, track like sales kit? Like, how does marketing lead to sales? Yeah, right. That's a question that I get all the time. Like, why should I even bother with social media? Like, how is that even going to lead to sales? Well, you got to know what a funnel is. Welcome to the world of marketing. Like, you got to yeah. know like what a marketing funnel is and what a sales funnel is and like what your pipeline looks like. And when you're able to map that out, you can see like, okay, well, you know, um, if I have my Facebook page and, you know, somebody interacts with me, like, am I following up with them? Like, or do I just leave them alone and let them sit there? Y you have to tell people what to do so you can guide them towards a sales conversion. Like get them on your email list, get them on a membership program, like sell them some merch. You can track merchandise conversions online. Super easy. That's really yeah. simple. And, you know, now that we're able to sell actual beer online, now it's really, you know, now is the time to like, you know, yeah. start paying attention to like marketing metrics and analytics and see what's working. If it's not working, ditch it, try something else. Um, I know you're used to this, but as marketers, we're, we're all about testing and failing yeah. <laughs> fast, you know, like fail as fast as you can, like see what doesn't work and get it the hell out of there. You want to, yeah. you know, find whatever is bringing you success, right? So paying attention to that stuff, having a plan, knowing what you're trying to do, know who you're trying to speak to, know how to reach them and then figure out if you're connecting with them. And yeah. that's like the ultra, I guess that's like the mega simplified version of <laughs> marketing no, awesome. leading to sales <laughs> no but you know it's awesome because this this i think they challenge people's beliefs you know and that generate questions which is important like you said it's important to ask questions because if we don't ask questions how the hell are we going to figure out how to market our business online which takes me to now to the sales part you know because you you, you mm -hmm. just touch on that i always wanted to ask this to somebody in the crappy industry like why you guys are so afraid of selling you know <laughs> that is an important question. And, and I don't try to piss yeah. you off, guys. I'm just trying to be honest because here's the thing. And this is always a, something that I, that I learned from Marshall Silver. He's one of, uh, he's a sales trainer, you know, and a hypnotist. And he, all, and he told us one time, like, if you have something of value to offer to the marketplace, you have the moral obligation to sell that product or service to them. I believe mm -hmm. it's the same with the craft beer industry. You know, <laughs> like you cannot buy happiness where you can buy beer which is pretty much the same thing so if you know that you can spread happiness you have the freaking moral obligation to sell it you know there's nothing wrong in selling yeah. it. there's nothing wrong in putting offers out there there's nothing wrong to to give them an incentive so people can spend more money you know it's, like, it's just part right. of the economy so talk to us yeah. a little bit about why people is afraid of making sales or trying to put offers on their social media or other platform whatever they're trying to sell yeah, I, I think it's a combination of a few things and hopefully I don't ramble too much and it doesn't, my point doesn't get lost in here, but I, I think honestly the root of it comes from just the spirit of the craft beer industry and the craft beverage industry in general and that's this mm -hmm. idea of like we're bucking the system, 
right? Like we're going against the mainstream. Like we're, you know, and what's the mainstream? Uh, corporate America, capitalism, you know, right. <laughs> sales, <laughs> the dirty B business word, right? Like ugh, down with the man <laughs> and down with the system and, and all that. So we were like the outliers, you know, we're like the ones with the weird beers that like nobody understands and you have to educate yourself about it. And, you know, we're doing different things and the brewers yeah. are like, you know, uh, constantly coming up with like creativity and innovation and like, oh, we're just supposed to like buck the whole system, right? Like we're, right. we're underdogs, we're, we're outside of the herd, you know? And right. I think a lot of that comes from that because business is very traditional in mm -hmm. the, you know, in a sense of like, it's conservative and it's a lot of, you know, one percenters and all, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Not to mix too much politics in there, but, um, but yeah, it's seen as like, you know, stiff corporate industry, like profit driven. There's no passion. Our industry is full of passion. You know, it's full right. of heart and it's full of stories. And I think people feel like that gets lost when they start dealing with the business side. Um, there's, <laughs> there's one page of my website that says like, just because you care about the, the business side of your production, you know, your organization doesn't make you any less craft. Right. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't diminish your craft status at all. It doesn't diminish your artisan, you know, farmhouse ales or anything like that. Like it doesn't, it just means that you want to make a living out of your passion and there's exactly. nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And, um, you know, I think some of it, I, that kind of just, feeds into years of reinforcement of like, you know, we have to buck this whole system and so on and so forth. I think um, another part of it is that people are kind of afraid of sales. They don't want to feel pushy. They don't want to feel salesy, like that used car salesman, you know, yeah. sort of image. And, um, you know, they don't want to feel like they're, they're inconveniencing people. But so I like to teach the science behind sales. And I, you know, I think you were there for my talk in the craft beer professionals, uh, the virtual yeah. uh, conference that we did. And I did a presentation on the science of beer sales. And we really dug into like, why do people buy things, right? Like consumer purchase behavior. Like, I love this kind of stuff because, um, you know, and if anybody's curious, if they want to read some more, get the book Influence by Robert Cialdini or- uh, That's an um, amazing book. It's such a good book. Or there's another great one called uh, To Sell is Human by Daniel yeah. Pink. That one is awesome. And it really explains that like, it's a value exchange, right? Like you're, yeah. um, people buy things to meet a need or to solve a problem or to make oh. their life better or to avoid something negative. So, and I know that seems crazy to think about alcohol, <laughs> in in that sense, but people have different needs. Like it might not be a survival need, but it might be a social need or a psychological need. And maybe you're fulfilling, you know, a, a spot of joy for somebody that like sparks a good beer memory or a, a spirits memory or something. You know what I mean? Like right. something that's personal to them. And when you can market your products to the right customers in the right way that can benefit the most from whatever you're crafting and whatever you've put your passion into, that kind of matchup is incredible. And then you can just run with it from there. Like take, you know, recreate success multiple times um, and really nurture the people that are brand loyal at that point because yeah. they've created that connection point with your brand and with your product. Um, and you've got a success story right there. There you go. You know, yeah. like it's just, I, it's a beautiful thing actually when you get, I think that comes from years of bartending when people would come in and they're like, I don't know what, you know, you got like 120 taps on the wall. Like, I don't know what to pick. And I'm like, what do you <laughs> normally drink? Like what brings you joy? Like what, you know, yeah. I sound like Marie Kondo here, but I'm like, what sparks joy? Like what, what do you enjoy drinking? Well, you know, I mean, I, I buy, you know, insert macro logger into the sentence here, but, you know, I really like, you know, chocolate. 
okay, <laughs> here we go. Let's get into it. Like this, you know, and then you just, you keep asking, you keep asking, you keep collecting data. And finally you can realize, okay, I'm going to get you a left-hand milk stout. And this right. is going to be awesome. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> like and just thinking about that kind of like, how can you pair people up in a way that you can say, you know what? Um, like in outside sales, like, Hey, liquor store owner, I know that you have, uh, this is a terrible example, but it's just when I'm picking above the top of my head, <laughs> I know you have a lot of elderly folks in this neighborhood. Right. And that's like your regular customer base. They might not want the latest, greatest bourbon barrel aged, you know, 12 percenter, but what they might want is a really nice German Hellas. Right. Like, you know, like, and, and let's, make a good match and, you know, find success from there. So that's my soapbox on sales. I'm sorry. No, that's, that's I get no, that's really great. excited. Like talking about that. No, I love it. <laughs> yeah. But I think if people realize that about sales in the, especially yeah. in the craft beer space, but for all craft beverages, you know, take that passion that you have and figure out what other people are out there that are passionate about the same thing and figure out how to find them. And it won't feel like sales. It's not going to feel like sales at all. It's going to feel like a really great solu problem solution. You know, yay, exactly. everybody wins, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I like it. And, and I'm, I'm thankful you're sharing this kind of stuff, you know, and, and to see that we are on the same page when it comes to sell and market and all that stuff. Because, you know, um, when it comes to sell, like you said, it's, it's a service. You know, it's part of a service that you offer it. And, and if you decided to start a business, if you, not, if you don't want to sell your product, why in the heck are you in business to start with? You know, because if you start a business, no matter, yeah. no matter, <laughs> yeah, you know, no matter how, how uh, independent you want to be, like you said, you know, it doesn't matter how craft you want to be identified and all that kind of stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, if you start a business because you want to have a better life, you want to provide more for your family. You want to provide more opportunities for your employees and the people around your community and serve your community or the people you want to target, right? Which that can translate into sales. But if you don't focus on those things, you don't own a business, you own a job. And that's the right. truth. Right. Know? Yeah. I mean, if it, you have to make that concrete decision and that commitment to it, like you're either going to make a career out of this or it just needs to be something that you do for fun and enjoyment, but that you don't want to create as a business. And if you do go that step forward and you do get a license and you're, you're selling products to people, you need to make sure that you're committed on the whole spectrum. And that's like, you know, business plan, production plans, operations, um, you know, distribution, sales, marketing, uh, analytics, you know, cash flow, like all, all that stuff. You, you yeah. can't uh, pick and choose which areas that you want to pay attention to because you've got to have the full deal, the whole deal. Yeah. yeah. And you know, working on your business not necessarily means that you have to work towards being a millionaire. Like if that's not your goals, that's completely yeah. fine. But at least you want to have a sustainable business, you know, in today's, yeah. in today's world, we don't have that option. Like everything that you just said about the how the industry has been for years, that might work 20 years ago, but I think technology and how the economy is working now and how the way we do business now has changed is just affects the industry, like it or not, it's gonna affect it. So we need to pivot and start adapting to those market needs. So that way you can grow or sustain a business, you know? Depends right. on what, are you, what are your goals are. But I think, you know, it's also, uh, uh, besides the marketing and the sales and, and all the business part that the, the industry is going through right now, like those, those changes, I think there has to be also uh, a mindset change in, in, in a lot of aspects, you know, like, you know, like you were talking about these books and all that stuff where you can learn more about yourselves and, and which as a matter of fact, another great book is uh, the ultimate, the ultimate sales machine by Chet oh, Holmes. Chet, yeah, I know. <laughs> I love that one. I'm surprised I didn't remember to mention that. No, that's a, that's a great book. You kind of have to skew it a little bit for our industry, but it's a, that's an excellent book. Yes. Oh yeah. Sure. It can be still, there's so many stuff that can be adapted to the industry from that book, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it is, it is very important, you know, but now besides all the marketing and all the sales, what do you think is one other thing that, uh, that you believe based on your experience and what you see with your clients is another thing that you believe the industry is lacking and is going to be crucial 
for them to get through this season and thrive in the next couple of years? Oh, I think um, people really need to start paying attention to distribution. You really have got to nail down your distribution plans. And um, that term is kind of misleading because I'm not just talking about working with a wholesaler. Like it could be your plans for to-go sales. It could be plans for using a third-party delivery service or doing delivery yourself. It could be self-distribution. Um, and it could be all the way up to working with multiple distributors or wholesalers. Um, our sales channels are evolving. Um, yeah. The, the scary part is, is that what probably all of this was going to happen anyways, like the um, ad advances that we're seeing in like channel sales and stuff like that and the way yeah. things are changing. Um, and you can quote me on this. All of this stuff would have happened if the pandemic never existed. It's just it would have taken place over like a few years yeah. or, or a decade or something. You know what I mean? But um, the problem with the, <laughs> the global health crisis is that it has squeezed all this innovation into like a matter of like weeks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, some of it's been months and some of it has been weeks and some of it has even been days, which is insanity. Yeah. And um, so all of this stuff got piled into our laps that would have taken a huge amount of time. So if you're feeling lost for anybody that's listening to this, you're not alone. In, in feeling that way at all because yeah. all of us are like, what is happening? It like changes on a 24 hour basis. It's crazy. It wasn't not supposed to play out like this. This was not supposed to happen, um, but it is happening and you need to pay attention to it because um, kind of like not paying attention to marketing or not paying attention to sales, you're going to fall behind. And then I hate to say, I get a lot of shit for this all the time, but you're going to go out of business. Yeah. Your, your brewery's <laughs> going to close. Like, I'm sorry. I know like uh, it sounds mean for me to say that, but trust me, I'm a business owner myself. I have to do the same thing. I have to pivot. I have to evolve. I have to pay attention. I have to educate myself. That's the, I, I get it. You know, um, it's not easy. I, I also understand that as well, but, um, it's, we've got to focus on what can you do right now to leverage your strengths so that you can continue to operate and you can continue to make money. And it might not be beer sales. It might be something else. Um, you know, I shared an article this morning with my online community about a, a, a brewery down in Colorado Springs, um, Fieldhouse Brewing, shout out to them, that he pivoted to being a drive-in movie theater. That was not yeah. part of his business plan at right. all <laughs> whatsoever, you know? And he can't necessarily serve beer to the people in the parking lot because it's like a whole different license, right? But what he can do is sell them beer to go, to take with right. them after the movie, right? Like how genius is that? Like, so I, you know, take this, I encourage people take that creativity and that innovation that you put towards production and think about how you can spin it business-wise because um, you're gonna have to start addressing takeaway sales or curbside pickup, you yeah. know, delivery options or looking into um, third party delivery services like uh, Drizzly or Tabor or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, also, you know, there's a lot of local liquor stores and whatnot that are doing delivery, or at least they do here in Colorado. I think it depends on your state laws. So like, how can you, even if you're self-distributing, how can you partner with them to get more product to people that is going out the door, you know, um, you don't have to be aligned with a distributor to make that happen. Um, and then thinking about online sales, you know, this like direct to consumer, the DTC channel, um, what does that look like? How can you promote it? How can you leverage that? Um, how can you increase non-beer sales like merchandise? Like, what do you have on hand that you can sell? Can you sell your space? You know, what resources do you have that you can leverage? Um, how can you pivot? Uh, you know, and then uh, communicating all that through market, through effective marketing, right? Like, yeah. cause you can't just create these new ideas and then not tell people about it. That's like launching a new beer and then not announcing the <laughs> launch of the new beer. Like, why would you do that? You have to, yeah. you have to tell people what to do. That's, you know, uh, that's part of your marketing plan. But then for the folks that are working with, um, distributor partners, um, thinking about like, how are you serving your retail partners? 
how are you servicing your customer base? Uh, did you just disappear when the uh, pandemic hit? Um, you know, do you still have sales reps? What are they doing? How are they communicating? Um, how are they supporting your brand at this time? And then if you're big enough to be working with multiple wholesalers, like how are you addressing chain sales? You know, how are you launching new products? Like that's still happening. Like, how, you know, so yeah, that's my uh, beefy answer for that. I think distribution is uh, underrated right now. Right. I think people really need to take a close look at that. Absolutely. Like, boom, drop the mic again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I mean, I, I mean, you, <laughs> you, you've given a lot of great information. I hope the people that are listening to this right now, live or later in the podcast or YouTube channel, I hope you guys take notes because everything that was happening right now, all these changes, all these new uh, distribution channels, they're, they're not here temporarily. They're here to stay, you know, and they're going to keep evolving. They're going to keep growing and it can be a great opportunity for you to make money, you know? So yeah, it's I, a new economy. It looks different. I, we, exactly. we've got a, what is that? Evolve or die? You know, I hate to say yeah. that, but <laughs> it's kind of true. <laughs> no, and, and you know, like you were saying, like a lot of people gives you shit because you're saying real stuff, you know, which at some point, if you get if, if people is getting upset at you because you're saying something that you should feel good with yourself, because that means that you're challenging <laughs> and you're telling the truth. Like, like the truth is the only thing that pisses people off lies they don't piss, it doesn't piss people off you know so it is great yeah. that you're sharing those things because you know what if we don't start facing these things we don't start talking about the reality if we don't get real you know about what's going on because here's the thing you know this is going to be a very strong opinion but a lot of people right now and not only the craft industry many industries you know everybody a lot of people is not everybody a lot of people is concerned about the future is concerned about their sales is concerned about their business oh i'm gonna end up closing my business i'm gonna lose everything and I have but have you have you taken the time to sit down and realize how your process and systems look like and how you can do it immediately to start generating more sales like you were saying sales online direct to consumer you know because it's not only about yeah. hey I have a new release a day before the mm -hmm. release you know you have something that has to be have this time to build you know like we have an online menu that we provide right this online menu is is you, you don't need to it makes the process simple because you don't have to take the people to another website. You can go directly to your Facebook page. So they don't have to take, you don't have to take your customer to another place. So it makes the entire process faster and easier because those seconds mm -hmm. that people spend in your platform or trying to get on the phone, trying to call you, trying to look for your phone number on your Facebook page because you don't have a website, which is the case with many brewers that don't have a website, you know? Yeah. That's time that customer it's, is like, you know what? Fuck yeah. this. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna go to the liquor store. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And I, I tell people this all the time. Like, I think the average nowadays is that the average consumer is bombarded with about 30,000 plus branded messages just throughout the day. Whether that's like Facebook, on their phone, like an email, something on TV, something that their neighbor says. You know what I mean? So like, literally you have less than five seconds to to grab that person so yes a hundred percent i agree with you because you literally have less than five seconds to keep that person there to keep yeah. them engaged to like grab their attention and make them stop scrolling or you know actually watch the full video or stick around on your website or sign up for your email list or something and like um, those are conversions that you can track. It's not necessarily that you have to track beer sales. You can track conversions in people's actions, yeah. you know, to see if they're interested. And if they're interested, you need to capitalize on that. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a, uh, it's a crazy ball game these days. Like I, it, there's some really simple stuff. What I've been telling people lately is stop making assumptions. Stop assuming yeah. that people know what to do with your product. Like if I'm new to like, if I'm not local and say I have to travel somewhere for, you know, I'm just throwing this out there, like non COVID conditions. If I have to travel somewhere and I'm like, Oh, I've never been in this place before craft breweries near me. Right. Like what's going to yeah. come up. Right. And then do I know how to like get to your property? Do I see like, do you have a picture of an empty tap room on your website? 
Like, nobody <laughs> wants to see an empty. That's so depressing. Like why? Yeah. Like we're selling beer. You should have happy people like drinking beer, or, like some gorgeous like product shot where I can like feel like I'm smelling like malt or something. You know yeah. what I mean? Like something <laughs> enticing, like something yeah. that would make me go, "Ooh, I'm gonna go out of my way to like check this place out." And then do do you have stuff on there that tells me how to find you? Is there a phone number? Is there updated hours? Is there an online store? Like, is, are there buttons that say like buy now? I know that seems really cheesy and corny because we're not used to it, but yeah. go go look at some other, use some other industries for reference. They, they tell people what to do. Sign yep. up here, buy now, you know, visit the tap room. Do, you know, you gotta tell people. So stop making assumptions that people know what to do with your marketing because they don't. They, yep. they have to be told. You know, you exactly. and I are marketers. We're used to that CTA, that call to action. Like, call to action and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's gotta be there. Yeah. Which I, yeah. at the end of the day gives you power, you know, because like you said, you're telling people what to do, you know, and that's not a bad thing. You want thing. them to I mean, buy your beer. No, it's not a bad <laughs> thing. You have to, it goes back to the business thing. Like they, yeah. they have to buy it for you to stay in business. If you want to keep doing what you're passionate about, you got to sell something. You got to yep. tell people to buy it. If you want to sell it, like, you know, you can't be the best kept secret in whatever X town that you're in, because if you're the best kept secret, you're not making money and you're going to close. That's just the way it is. Like, you know, absolutely. I, yeah. I hate to be mean like that. I'm sorry. You know, I don't like think, no, you're not, you're not being mean. <laughs> <laughs> you're not being mean at all. You know, I mean, people who listen to this and is, and is getting uh, fired because whatever you're saying, like, don't get mad guys. You know, this is just the truth, you know, and what, if you say something very important right now. And, and that's the reason why uh, for those who have listened to, to, to the show, um, I have, guests from other industries too, you know? And the reason why I do that is because success leaves clues. Everything that you have learned, you mentioned that you have coaches, you have paid for people to learn more about marketing and about sales and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure that most of those people have no clue about the craft beer industry or other beverage industry, probably they're experts in different industries, but like you were mentioning before, you started at some point with real estate too, you know? And it is important to start looking at these other industries because there's a lot of the stuff that I learned with the real estate agents that I apply to my systems to help the craft beer industry and they work, <laughs> you know? So mm -hmm. it is, it is very important to be open, not only to see what uh, other beverages industry are doing, but also what other industries out there are doing, you know, especially right now on social media. And that's crazy that you said that 30,000 people now, uh, 30,000 pieces of advertisement. I remember like 10 years ago, it used to be 4,000. Now it's 30,000. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's gotten crazy. And yes, I'm a big, um, you know, I, I can say this all day till I'm blue in the face. Like it's okay to get help. It's okay to get help, yeah. learn from other industries, educate yourself, all that stuff. And then when people get tired of me saying that, I'm, I say, fine, go read Sam from Dogfish's brewing up a business book. And you know what he says in there? Look to other industries, educate yourself. <laughs> watch what other people are yeah. doing and I'm like if you're not going to believe me because you don't quite trust me yet you know hopefully you will eventually but read that book he's like a pioneer in our industry right yeah. like he says it himself I forget which chapter it's in but you know he says it like I spent time talking to people and getting advice and using coaches and looking to other industries and reading books and doing my research and all that stuff and yes, it takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it if you're invested in growing in your, growing your craft beverage business. Yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah. glad you're mentioning all this, you know, because you're inspiring me to keep bringing more people from different industries, you know, because this is a great, <laughs> well, this thanks. is a great platform, you know, this is a great, that's, that's the goal of this platform, you know, to like be a resource for other people to learn, to hear things are like the ones that you've been sharing here right now, you know, and, 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 and keep just sharing the same information over and over and over until we get it, you know, because I think it's time to start playing our entrepreneur roles in this industry, you know, which is a fun sure. thing to do. You know, it is a fun thing to do that you can even yeah. spread your art and your passion to more people if you just start implementing these things. And I know it sounds overwhelming, right? It sounds overwhelming knowing all like, how in the hell am I gonna, people are gonna see me through all these 30,000 pieces of advertisement that they see on a daily basis. That's why you have a system. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to exactly. Break through that, to break through that noise and get people to see your stuff and get people yes. to like, to trust you, to know, like, and trust you. 
so they can do business yes. with you. you know? <laughs> exactly. That's the essence of sales. Like you, that whole no like and trust factor. And you know, every other industry on the face of this planet has gone through this stage. This is not yeah. something new. Like the Tesla was not something familiar to people at some point in time. You know what I mean? Like it was considered yeah. weird. Like, and there weren't a lot of, but it took like education and, you know, effort, time and effort and, you know, investing into like how that car meets people's needs and that there's people out there that need it. There's people out there that need craft beer and that need craft yeah. spirits and that need small batch wine. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> there's, you know, yeah. So you just have to figure out their profiles and where to find them and how to connect with them. And it doesn't matter if you do it, you know, speaking to our current situation, it doesn't have to be in person. Would it be great to have that in person? Yes, it would be awesome. And that's what we've been used to for the past decade plus, yeah. you know, but um, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit in the corner and mope about it and let your business go under? Or are you going to pivot and think, what's the essence of that brand connection? You know, what yeah. makes that tap room experience special? Like what makes my brand special? What value are people getting from me when I sit in front of them? You know, what am I sharing with them? Am I, am I talking about origin stories? Am I talking about production? Am I talking about ingredients and where they were sourced from? Like, what do you do better than anybody else? What's like the first thing that you tell people if they're brand new and they're sitting in your tap room or your tasting room and then don't be shy about it, put it online, get, yeah. get a YouTube channel. It's free to start a YouTube channel. It's not that big of a deal. If you have a smartphone, you have a camera crew. It's not rocket <laughs> science. Like it's just, you can do crazy stuff with a smartphone and a little bit of interwebs, you know, like yeah. anything is possible at this point. You can bring connections into people's living rooms. You just have to be innovative about it and just take that approach that anything's possible. Boom. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No. You're building up my confidence here. I'm a little I mean, it's because it's awesome. You know, I think it is. I love everything that, that, that you're sharing. Like, do we have any coaching coming, by the way? <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, no, it, is, it, it is great, you know, because I think that's, uh, that, that's, that's part of my passion and the reason why I'm part of this industry too, you know, because I, I would love to see this industry thrive, you know? Yeah, unfortunately, this fucking virus is going to hurt a lot of people, but there's a lesson to learn, you know, and there's an opportunity right now to get stronger, you know, because that's mm -hmm. what these kind of situations can do to us. So you, like you said, or you go to, to the, cry to the corner and start crying, or you learn the lesson, get stronger and build a stronger business or start learning new things. And if you don't know how to implement it, they can reach out to people like you. They can reach out to people like me. They can reach out to people like from full port media and other guys out there that are doing great stuff for the industry to help you guys sell more beer yeah. and have more stable businesses. So it is all about a matter of mindset and realize that there's opportunities, no matter if we're in the middle of a pandemic, there's opportunities, you know, like I'm thriving. My wife is thriving. Everybody around me is thriving because we have seen those opportunities instead of waiting to see what's going to happen, <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes, so. exactly. There's, there's a lot out there and I don't want people to, I know stuff sucks right now. It just does. It sucks. Yeah. Um, and every organization is different, whether you got an SBA loan or a PPP assistance, or you're trying to power through it. If you've pivoted, like, I know that this is unknown territory and it just blows there's not a better way to describe, you know, it, there's not yeah. a better way to put it, but um, know that our market is more mature than it used to be. And there is help out there for sure. And again, it's okay to ask for help. Absolutely. It's okay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's, you're right. It's just totally okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I really, I think you have shared a lot of great information in here. A lot of truth, well, <laughs> you, you know, thank which you. is I great, so. but we've been here for almost an hour. So I just have a mm -hmm. couple more questions for you. Okay. Sure. So first of all, just uh, give us a quick review about your business and about your coaching system and everything that you, you teach uh, the craft beverage professionals. And mm -hmm. then we just wrap it up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh yeah. So by the way, I, also oh. where they can, sorry, sorry, where they can find you. Gotcha. And one last piece of advice you like to share with the audience. Okay. 
Um, I'll see if I can be succinct about this. So I, my, the name of my company, if you didn't know already, is called Not Your Hobby Marketing Solutions. Because if you have a business, if you have customers, you have a business. It's not a, not a home brewing hobby. So we're going to graduate from that. Um, there's two ways that people can work for me, uh, work with me. There, I have a, a library, an online library of digital courses that you can just buy off of my website. You don't have to deal with me at all. Um, and it ranges in topics from uh, managing your distributor partners, like what that relationship looks like, not the contracts. But once you get the contract signed, like how you actually right. sell, sell more product with them. And that spans different industries, cider, beer, wine, spirits, whatever. Um, fundamentals of sales, um, doing outside sales, um, fundamentals of marketing. Uh, I've got social media courses on there. I've got stuff about email marketing. I've got my big course about how to build a marketing plan. If you do want to talk to me, and work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I offer, I, I don't like to use the word consulting or consultant, even though I say it because it kind of wraps up what I do, but basically right. it's like having access to an industry colleague pretty much on demand at all times. So it's, um, you know, I work with people kind of on a monthly basis, sort of like a subscription model Right. Um, where you have direct access to me and my industry knowledge. Um, we workshop what you need to do so that you get actionable strategies that you can actually use. If you want the fundamentals, I can teach you fundamentals all day, but a lot of people just want like, this is what I have going on. Can you give me a solution? Yes, I can. Bang. Okay, done. That's it. You know, let's continue to work together. So I like to call it like on-demand guidance basically. Um, so yeah, you, that's all over my website. That's the best way to reach me. It's www.notyourhobbymarketing.com. Um, yeah. yeah, but the other way to reach me is on social media. I love it when people find me on social media. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram at Not Your Hobby Marketing. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Not Your Hobby Marketing Solutions. I'm not a Twitter gal, not on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I am on, I'm, I'm big on Facebook and Instagram. I would love it if people would sign up for my email list. Cause you get a whole bunch of like free resources and guides. I send out, a, I write a lot. I love writing to my audience and sharing knowledge with people. So I write a lot of blog articles. Um, and you know, on my website, you can see my client list, see who I've worked with so far. Um, I've got some other people in the mix. There's a lot of podcasts and media stuff on there as well. Um, Again, I think my biggest uh, takeaway from this, if I had one, one thing for people to remember, and I keep saying it, I sound like a broken record, it's okay to ask for help. You do not have to be an expert in this stuff. There are people out there that can help you, um, and it is beverage industry specific. Like, it's not just for the corporate world. It's not just for people selling toilet paper although those people are probably doing fine right now and don't need any help at all. That was a bad example, but it's not like <laughs> you know, with like paper supplies. This is, um, you know, our market has evolved with you. So the supplier part of this equation is out there if you need help. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate it. I think you nailed it. This has been a great episode and I'm sure that people is going to, appreciate everything that we have talked today in the show even that might gonna piss off some people but that's completely fine you know <laughs> okay. that's okay it's it for happens. your own it's I, for I your mean, own good <laughs> it's for talking your own to someone good, who's guys. been in sales for a long time i'm used to like rejection and people getting pissed off at me it's okay i know right hey you <laughs> yeah. know that we even have book recommendations that you guys can start reading you know that can help you a lot to put some of your thoughts and ideas together when it comes to sales and marketing, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that's, yeah. that's very important. But like you said, uh, you don't have to be an expert on it. That's why there's people offering services for you, you know, like, like Julie, like myself and other people are there in the industry that the whole goal is to help, you know, and see the industry growing, especially getting through all this system because we don't know what's going to happen next. But one yeah. sure, one thing I'm sure is that no matter what happened, we can still do business and thrive no matter how hard times get you know definitely definitely so, we're, we're in this together and we're gonna yeah. get through this absolutely we will and probably we're gonna have all we're gonna have a beer all together and yeah that shit face <laughs> <laughs> but at some point yes that will happen we'll get to a breaking point <laughs> yeah well, we can finally <laughs> grab a beer together all of us like bring all the guests in the show together and just 
have fun. <laughs> yep, definitely, definitely. Awesome. But is there anything else you would like to say, Julie, to share with us? Um, I don't think so. The only thing I want to tell people is that even if, you know, um, d like, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Um, I get that. I hear that a lot from people. They're like, I don't want to commit to anything and I'm going to get stuck in like your sales funnel and like all, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay, I, I get it. I understand that people like don't want to hit that button on the website to contact me. I'm not scary. I don't bite. You're not going to get stuck on some email list that you can't get off of. I do ask for people's permission. Um, and there's, you know, uh, something that I started during the pandemic was offering up people free, like 30 minute consults. If you want to just call me and ask me a couple of questions, you can find that on my website. Just, you know, schedule a little session with me or you can reach out to me on social media. Um, don't be afraid to reach out for help. Again, it's, it's okay. Um, you know, you're not committing to like a 20 year distributor contract by reaching out to me. So <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> that's true that's completely true yeah <laughs> yeah no thank you so much julie for taking the time being here really appreciate it and had a lot of fun during this time you know I hope we thanks can do, me too yeah thanks maybe we can me. do another episode later after the pandemic and gotta ha have an update for all these guys you know it's always good you know i yes i, I hope sure. this when things are a little better <laughs> yeah absolutely because right now is holy shit <laughs> yeah, exactly anyway, that's it's no like, way to wrap it up <laughs> i know exactly but anyway and for you guys listening if you enjoyed the show make sure you share it with somebody put it on social media send in a dm a text message email whatever you can do to help us spread the word and also make sure you leave us that review on itunes or subscribe to the youtube channel so more people can find the show and get access to all this valuable information and lastly if you're ready to grow your sales and take your brewery to the next level, make sure you go to onlinemenu.marketingbrewingco.com and watch the free video to how you can grow your sales online. I will see you guys for the next episode. In the meantime, be safe, keep working hard, and cheers. Later. Hey guys, thank you for watching. This show was brought to you by the Marketing Brewing Company, an industry-leading marketing provider and coaching firm. If this episode has provided with valuable information for you and your business, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you know somebody who needs to hear this, share it with them, send them a text message, a DM, put it on social media, whatever you can do to spread the word. And lastly, if you're a brewery owner ready to take your business to the next level, make sure you head to marketingbrewingco.com and fill out the form to get started and get your free assessment of your current marketing sales strategies. I will see you guys for the next episode. In the meantime, cheers.